All right now at this point what we've done then is we bought our domain and our hosting we bought our own little piece of the internet and now we uh, we're gonna get we're gonna start using it so again if you have your account at some other company that's fine but I obviously I can only show what's what to do here in, in GoDaddy you should be able to get around easily whatever domain that you've got but here on GoDaddy when I when I when you first log in basically you see this screen here this this sort of like screen about buy more products or whatever what you want to make a note of is you you want to always remember to go to the top right corner where it says my account click on that and then switch over to visit my account so click on visit my account and then here it's going to show you what products you've bought so I've got domains, web hosting, email, something that says get paid, and online bookkeeping, and photo album. I never really use either of these, so I can't talk much about them, but I use the domains and the web hosting and the email all the time. Notice if you click the plus symbol next to either any one of these, they open up. So if I open up domains, it says I've got one domain. Victorsart.info, when it expires, they're going to tell you again, buy, buy a privacy for it any products connected to it none at the moment and then manage we'll look at all of these things in detail soon um, any of these companies uh, I believe it's by law have to honor that if you want to move from one company to another they let you move it just like in just like a phone number it used to be years ago that if you had your phone number on AT&T you could not move it over to Verizon then eventually the laws was changed and then you could do that same thing with domains and such they have to let you move your domain away if instead you get a better deal at Bluehost. Now they don't have to make it easy, but they can let you do it. So there's a section here about transferring. Let's say you want to transfer away from GoDaddy or into GoDaddy. Uh, so there's domains, web hosting, and it's just telling me I've got this, it expires next year, it's Linux, and then of course also email. Mine is saying I've got these free email plans. So that's what I'm saying. I didn't have to pay for that extra. Uh, I didn't have to pay to get to give myself more email addresses. It comes with free email addresses. They're not going to be as full featured and powerful as a Gmail address and so forth, but they'll get the job done. Uh, we don't need to do too much. Notice all of these have a manage on the right side. We don't need to do too much to manage the actual domain, but we'll take a quick look at it. Your first row here says domains, and if you click manage, that'll give you a screen where it gives you some of this basic, or actually some of this advanced information. Uh, don't worry about that. When does this expire? You've got these options that you can pop open here. These technical things you don't really need to deal with, name servers and DNS and so forth, but one of them that might be useful for you is forward domain. This is how you can get the economy plan, but still have more than one website. Because you can create multiple websites in your hosting in different folders, and then by different names, and then set up forwarding. So when someone types, uh, victorswebdesign.net that address because someone goes to that address and then that will take them to the site that I've got in a folder so it's a little more technical than most people need to know but we have that ability I've got renew domain edit contacts this is set to me for me over here auto renew so for my convenience a year from now it'll charge my credit card to renew all of this so I don't lose my presence online. Remember when we were looking at domainhole.com we could do a search for recently expired domains and we can snap up someone's name. This is set that it will automatically renew itself but I'm gonna be charged again you know sixty dollars or so next year. I can easily go in here and select edit and turn that off and I can add privacy and certified domain and so forth. So I don't really do too much on this screen. I'm going to go back. I do more things, more important things under web hosting. 
and under email. So under web hosting, I'll click manage. It says, you've got a new hosting account ready for you to use. Eventually, this is where we go in to install WordPress, to create databases, to do this advanced stuff. But it's not set up yet, so I'll click Setup. It's managed there, right? No, yours is already set up, so it says Manage, so you're fine. But because mine is totally brand new, I need to set it up. And it's saying, choose your domain. I've only got one. So this is going to link basically my hosting and my domain. So I'm going to say, use this hosting with this domain. And I've only got one. <coughs> We've got subdomains, which is more complex to, talk, to deal with. So I'm not going to quite talk about it. But uh, I'm going to select just my domain, the one that I just bought. We've got a login to log into your GoDaddy account. This is asking a login to connect to our cPanel, which is all of that stuff about creating users and emails and so forth. And then there might also be a login to upload files. So you can probably use the same login info for all of them, but it's more secure to have different logins. So here it's asking for a username and password. I'm going to fill that in. Alright, so then um, it's going to just, uh, instead of having the boring progress bar that tells you it's, it's working, it gives me this cute animation here that everything's setting up. So this, is, this is much better than just waiting and seeing that progress bar. I actually get a cool movie here. Build a new website. No. no, build a new website sounds like it might be for the uh, the website builder account instead of the regular hosting account. Okay. So I click on use my domain. Yeah. All right, so once I've set that up and I get the animation, it brings me here to my cPanel, which is a very cool, very powerful screen that GoDaddy provides me to manage all of these aspects of the nuts and bolts of my website. Here I can check my disk usage, how much space am I using up, 
uh, do backups and so forth. I've got some video tutorials. I've got managing my databases. And look at that, install WordPress. That's the whole point of getting our account here because I want to set up WordPress. I'll look at that in a moment. More complex stuff about domains and emails. This is something that still confuses me a, a little bit, but I see that there's a spot to add an email address here in cPanel and also one on the main GoDaddy screen, remember? Over here back on the GoDaddy, here it says email. So there's two spots here for email, and I've created email both of these ways, and I get slightly different results. So I'm going to try one than the other, but I'm going to try to create an email address eventually uh, under my cPanel. This seems to be the newer, the more modern way with more features. So like I said, I've used GoDaddy for like over 10 years now, and I've seen it evolve. And this is like the newest, best version of the control panel, the, the C panel. It has a lot of great features. So there's an email section. We'll look at that later. Metrics. Right here I can get a bunch of data, like how many, how many people are connecting to my site, how much is being downloaded, how fast my site is, all of that stuff. Yes? This screen, then we'll get to my C panels. So, what other things? We've got security, uh, more advanced stuff like IP blocker. We don't want certain sites to visit our site and so forth. We've got PHP, advanced stuff like cron jobs and so forth. So this is pretty powerful. This can be very technical. The things that we really need, though, uh, are oops, the things that we really need are usually toward the top. And you can rearrange this stuff. Notice if you drag these things around, you can arrange it. So what I like is to have the email section higher at the top because I'm going to use that more just drag it up. So I'm gonna have the files and the email near the top. Those are the two I really need. Uh, I won't do much here under preferences. I don't need to technically do much actual database stuff. Um, I'm gonna use this uh, web apps WordPress in a moment but I don't need to change it. But up here I've got files and email and then on the left side some quick stats on my address. Uh, on my on my domain and such right now I'm using 0% CPU and 0 out of my 512 megs of RAM and all of that stuff so here in the the features that we get out of the economy type of website are, are are very good if our site gets a lot of traffic we might be slowing down and this panel here will, sh will show us what the problem is and usually the way to fix that though is to pay a little bit more for them to give you more resources like right now, if you, buy a, if you buy a computer, it's probably going to have like, what, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 6 gigabytes of RAM. It's going to have a lot of space. This one's only got half a gigabyte of RAM for, to run our website. But overall, it, it, this is pretty much what we need. And if we need more features, we can always pay for them. Yes? So here I um, I will go for I will go for it and install WordPress onto my site because at the moment I haven't checked it but if I try to go to my address most likely I won't see anything I'm going to open another web browser just to check it so I got Victor's art.info uh, 
either it won't connect or it'll give an error or something because the, there's nothing on the site yet I barely created the cPanel and I haven't put anything onto it so probably nothing will show up here oh future home of something quite cool okay well in any event I have my domain I, ha I want to put a website on it which will be WordPress so I'm gonna give that a try I'm gonna go back here to my cPanel and down here under web apps I'm gonna click WordPress this is the installatron and it's telling me this is going to give me WordPress 4.1, it takes 21 megs of RAM, etc. That's fine. Whatever. On the top right, I've got install this application. So I'll select install this application. It wants to confirm where would you like to install this. Now, here's something cool. Uh, we can install WordPress as many times as we want. The, the difference though is right now it's going to install on the root level of my address so when someone visits victorsart.info it'll show my WordPress I have here optionally I can install this under test so what will happen is I'll have a WordPress site installed into victorsart.info slash test so I can install a variety of um, WordPress sites to test it. Uh, and all it needs is to be in a subfolder. And if I buy another name, such as victorsdesigns.com, I can then forward that address. So when someone goes to that address, it'll automatically go to this address where I've got my WordPress. So you don't have to buy more websites or more space. Um, we're going to assume we've got one website, so I won't put anything here actually. I'm going to let it install my WordPress right to the top level, right to the root of my site. So don't put anything on a directory. What version? And it's going to say different versions here. I'll do the recommended one, which is 4.1.1. .1. The user, what does that stand for? ULA, the user, the user license agreement, something. Um, so the user agreement, yeah, I accept it. You can click there to read what it actually is. When we set up an account over at WordPress.com, a lot of this was done for us. We just created the account and it gave us an address. We now have to do a little bit ourselves, but it's not that complicated. And notice what GoDaddy gives us. Uh, is uh, some features here such as automatic updates. Do not do it. Do the minor versions and security releases or update to the new version. This default here is good because that will keep your site more secure. You won't have to think about it. WordPress, uh, GoDaddy will be updating the security features when there's a new one. So that's good. Uh, I would not select though the new version because that would be like if it goes from WordPress 4.0 to 5.0 it might be too much of a change on your site but the one about security releases and so forth I say yeah go ahead and update that when we talk about plugins we haven't talked about plugins or we haven't done plugins in this class yet because we couldn't we couldn't add a shopping cart plugin or a chat plugin we couldn't add any of those plugins to our wordpress.com but now we can on our own site but those need to be updated too or else they might have security issues and here it says, would you like us to also update your plugins? And, it, and the default is no. And I would say, keep it on no. Don't update your plug plugins automatically. Because who knows if the new plugin is not compatible with your current theme, or if the new plugin conflicts with another plugin. So this one, I don't trust it to automatically update. I need to do it myself. Uh, the same thing for the theme. When we get more complex with our theme, oftentimes we'll have to edit our own code, edit the code of the theme. And if we select automatic theme updates, it'll erase all of our code changes because it's updating to the new version of the theme that does not have our, our code. So I will not let that automatically update my theme.
this one I don't I don't quite know what to say my opinion on uh, uh, updates for your site because it says it sounds useful create a backup and automatically restore the backup if the site if the update fails oh if the update fails okay um, that probably is okay I thought it was going to be updating on a regular basis hmm. for clients I have the do not create a backup because I do this myself my company does this for the clients we know what we're doing we want to do it ourselves for you for you that you are new to WordPress perhaps having it automatic backups will help you in case something goes wrong so you have to decide what to do here I'm gonna leave it as create the backup All right, so this is a section here about creating a username for your for your WordPress login. All right, so lots of logins. We've got a login for GoDaddy, we've got a login for cPanel, and we've got a login for WordPress. So this is when we created our WordPress site at WordPress.com. It's going to ask for a username and password and all of that. And I don't like the username it gave me and the email address, so I'm going to put in my real username and, and address and so forth. One thing that I recommend though is do not, for your administrator name, do not put admin. That'll help people log into your site. If they know your, your, if they're guessing your admin name, they might be able to guess your password easier. So don't put admin as your login name. You can put anything else. So we can put the the same um, username as a C panel? Yeah. yeah, you can. Or, um, you could, although it's more secure to change these things because if someone figures out one login, then they have access to all your logins. So it's more secure to have different logins, but it's less convenient. It asks for a website title. Now, you have two options. Either of these will, will work for you for this class. We've got our site over at you know, mysite.wordpress.com. And we're about to create mysite.com. You can choose to export, and I'll show you how to do it, but you can choose to export your wordpress.com site into your GoDaddy site. And it'll bring it what it currently is pretty much over to your current site. You can do that. Or you can start from scratch, make something totally brand new. That's fine also. So either or, it's not going to affect your grade or anything. Um, so here it's asking a name and a tagline. So you can use the same one you used for your WordPress.com or make something up new. doesn't matter. Victor's art tagline here. We can always change this later and we'll have a lesson where we talk a little bit more about some of this stuff about your branding and your marketing. But for right now, I guess I'll write here the place to buy Victor's art. We've got uh, two-factor authentic authentication and it's turned on that's going to be a little bit too much setup than I want to talk about at this moment which is that right now we've got a login we've got an email and a password and if we try to log in with it it'll log in two-factor authentication is that you log in with those credentials and then it'll also ask you for a one-time random password that is created via an app so it's a little bit more setup because then you have to link your phone to your website. It's more it's more secure because it'll ask you for two passwords. So if someone figures out your password, your email address, and tries to log in, they'll get stuck at this point that it says, "Okay, now type in your random password." So the person would need your phone and your app for that second password, so they can't get in. It needs more setup. So I'm not going to do it just yet. 
So I'm going to say don't enable two-factor just yet. What I will say is limit the number of failed attempts. If someone's trying to guess your password and they're guessing five different passwords, it's going to lock them out. That's good. Or else the, the default is someone can keep trying and trying and trying, they might guess your password. There's something about multi-site, don't worry about that. Leave it on no. Under the advanced part, I'll let it be automatically managed because this is about your database and your backups and so forth. So I'll let I'll leave that alone. That sounds good. I'll click install. Excuse me. Yeah. What What did you write in the directory optional? I didn't write anything because I'm leaving my I'm leaving my WordPress to install on the root level on the main address. So about how the system is going to recognize the well, if you make another, if you want to make another web, another WordPress site, you do have to write, because you are going to need to write another address. But are you saying how's it going to recognize your WordPress site? Yeah, the CIS to just have that. It's, it's, it's not going to recognize it until another screen later. Oh, okay. All right. So we make we make this install here. Yes. So I'm going to install this, and yeah, it's a few more steps than the simple WordPress.com, but it really gives you much more power, much more control to go through all of this process of buying a, a WordPress uh, account, I mean, uh, buying a GoDaddy account and setting up your WordPress and all of that, for the big reason, of course, of plugins. And to look more legitimate, I actually will have a real website instead of being at WordPress.com. It's also limited. It wants to help people that don't have much experience in um, in uh, in making a website, like they never took a Dreamweaver class or they never took this class. They don't have any experience, but they want a website. So that builder that comes with it will just be a lot of like you know copy and paste buttons that help you get your site done, but it won't be as powerful as what we're going to talk about. Well, the big thing is like. The big things is like the plugins. Like it won't let you. It won't let you do uh, maybe the chat features or the e-commerce or that sort of thing. So it's not as powerful. All right. So eventually we get to this screen. It tells me some stats here. I've got version uh, WordPress four point one point one. The files on the server are taking up about 21 and a half megabytes. So with a clean, empty WordPress, it takes 21 megabytes. But I've got um, what? Uh, how much space did I have? One gigabyte of space. My database is a little bit half a megabyte. I don't have any backups. And here's some information you want to write down. So your, my site now is at victorsart.info. And to log in is victorsart.info slash wp-admin. That's the default login screen for every WordPress site. Whatever your WordPress address is, slash wp-admin. So at this point, uh, I'm going to click on my login button right there. The yeah, the second one, the one that says WP Admin. Did click on login? See, look up here. See where I've got here? WP Admin. That's your login screen. Click on that. Oh. Oh, 
on, right. So that took me over, over to my address, and now that's, that's my website. That's my legitimate website. It's got WordPress. Uh, it has the full power. It should look very familiar. Look, I, I recognize all of these screens here, posts and appearance and so forth. But one difference is now we've also got plugins. So we'll talk in detail about plugins at a certain point. Now I've got my WordPress site set up, and if I go to another web browser, I'm not logged in. I went to another web browser, and if I go back to the address, eventually then uh, my site will show up there. Well, there it is. So I went to another web browser, and I go look at it, and there we go. I've got a website. It's WordPress. People can visit that site now. It's real. It's online. We have a very empty site, nothing has been transferred over. I think I'll talk about that next time because I want to talk about uh, making an email address. And that way you'll have a, a legitimate looking email address instead of a Yahoo or, or Gmail or whatever. So any questions so far? Did everyone get into their, their WordPress here? All right, so... Um, I'm going to leave that window alone. I'll go back over here, back to Installatron. Yes. Um, can we change the uh, domain to Spanish? So the so you're saying everything in WordPress right now is in Spanish? Uh, yeah. Well, not where it says build your WordPress, but like your your buttons on the left and side. Oh, where's this FTD? Yeah, it says FTD. Um, I have to look up where that is, but try. Uh, we can get back to it a little bit later during break, but maybe try going to where your name is on the very top right. Hover over there and click Edit My Profile. There might be a spot there. If not, we'll we'll look in it during the break. But I've got my WordPress site up now, and I'm going to go back here to GoDaddy. Uh, I'll click Home. Let's see if that takes me where I want to go. Yeah, home, that'll work. Oh, it was also up here. I wanted to make an email, but anyway, here back on the C panel, I can always go back to the main screen and there's these these quick buttons. But I want to see what's the process to make an email address. So if I I'll check this out here. I'll scroll down under the email section. Wait, I can do home yeah. Okay. Click on home. And let's see we've got accounts, default address. Um, let's see, that account and email wizard, let's see, I think, I think that one will work better. Okay, so here under the section of email, I'm going to click on the email wizard. They should step me through a few steps to create a new email address, so click on email wizard. And so here, if I've got more than one domain, it would it would let me choose the domain here. And I says, okay, give yourself an email address, anything you want. So I could do, you know, contact at victorsart.info or sales or um, about us or info or John or whatever. You can make an email address that now has your domain instead of someone else's, instead of Gmail, Hotmail. Etc. So I want to do, I'll do contact at victorsart.info. It needs a password. Billing. Hmm? Billing. You could do billing also, yeah, if you're going to take orders and so forth, you could do that. Now, maybe we'll talk about it later, but this would be the place that we would be some that we would create something like no reply. You know how you buy something at Amazon and you get an email that says you just bought something and the address says no reply at amazon.com. This is the place where you can create that. I have a suggestion. Yeah. So I went to this wedding networking thing recently and one of the wedding planners she put hello at whatever and then whatever oh. was. It was so like one of the best business emails I've ever seen. Yeah, so that's that's the cool thing about doing your own address because if I wanted to get hello at gmail.com, someone took it years ago. Right. 
but here I can do whatever name I want, uh, and it's got my own address. Yeah, so uh, yeah, that gives me a good idea. I'm going to do mine. It's going to be what up, <laughs> Victor's info. You can't put a question mark, of course, but now anyway. So whatever you want to do here. So there's a bar that is going to say uh, how strong your password is, and apparently it wants you to be at at least 80 strength. So if it's not letting you, you don't have a secure password, perhaps. <clears throat> yeah. You have to write an essay for a password. I barely got to 82 there. And then here, mailbox quota. Would I rather have 250 megabytes or unlimited? What's better? Is a little better than less? I mean, is a little better than more? Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to select unlimited and see what happens. It worked. Now the way you access this email, you know that when you want to log into Gmail, you can go to gmail.com, you, and you want to access your Yahoo, you go to yahoomail.com, whatever. You go to the address, you check your email, or if you've got it set up on your phone, well, it's in your app, you have the Gmail app and you view your, you view your, your email. This is a little different. Uh, here it gives you some advice on how to set this up. If you've got, for example, Outlook, or, or Mac Mail or whatever, it gives you instructions on how to set this up on your home computer. But I know also, just from trial and error and from talking to tech support, you also have your own private login on the website. Once you've set up an email address, now you'll have the name of your website slash webmail. So you'll be able to access this email from any web address or, of course, there's instructions there on how to set it up on your iPhone or your Android, but you can access your email by going to your address slash webmail. Question? Yeah. I can ask, after this image here, where did you go? Nowhere. Oh. I'm still there. I'm just making a note here. You should make a note that your email, to access your email, is going to be the name of your website. slash webmail. So that's where you're going to go in to actually log in to your email. Slash webmail? Mm-hmm. One word, webmail. So on this screen, this is just informational stuff, so I'll just say I'll do it later. So I've uh, set up an email address, and now it looks now I look more legitimate because I actually have an email address with my domain. And if I click back on home here to go back to my cPanel, um, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a note for you here to log in to your WordPress. It's gonna be whatever address you have. So in my case, 
victorssite.com slash wp-admin. So whatever your site is, slash admin, slash wp-admin, that's your login screen to log into your WordPress site. To log into your email. It's going to be the name of your site, slash webmail. And then, of course, to manage all of this stuff, to manage everything, that's GoDaddy. So at GoDaddy is where you can create more, you know, and then I will say, and then into cPanel. And then you'll be able to create more addresses, more websites, uh, install more WordPress sites, back up your stuff, <coughs> etc. So those are the big logins that you need to know. What's your opinion on having several websites versus just having one? It depends what their purpose is. So if I've got, let's say, a, a web design company, I really only need my one website uh, for my web design company because I've got one thing that I'm doing. I'm a web designer. But if I was doing web design and I was also doing paintings and so forth, I would have a website for that business and a website for that other business. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is I would not have victorsdesigns.com, victorswebsite.net, victorsamazing, you know, webdevelopers.org. I would not have three different websites about the same thing. Uh -huh. But I would have three different websites for three different things. So let's test this out. Um, I've uh, we've created some stuff here. I've d I've been doing all of this in Chrome, whatever web browser you use. Switch to another web browser and let's log into our email just to see what it looks like. So I'm going to switch over to Internet Explorer, just any other web browser. And like I said, this will give you practice to remember what is my web address, what is my address to log into my email. So switch to another web browser. Go to your address slash webmail. Yes, the address will eventually change up at the top. Don't worry about that. But it's going to ask you to log in with the email address you created and the password. You need to go to your address and then at the end slash webmail. You need to go to your address and then at the end add slash webmail. Well, mine didn't have a com, so I didn't type com. But you need webmail at the end. Does it matter which one you use? What do you mean? Oh, I'm about to say that. One moment, yeah. So you want to log in. So you want to log in, and then here you get into this uh, sort of mini control panel, this mini C panel for your email uh, and it's gonna say well like I wanna I wanna access my email on on my desktop or my iPhone there'll be instructions right there uh, I wanna change my password I can change it there I can do other stuff and then it's gonna say how do you wanna read your email we've got horde round cube and squirrel mail so three different ways to view your email doesn't matter I like using round cube so I'll click on that one <coughs> 
I like the way it lays out the screen. I like the columns and the design and the layout and so forth. They all do the same thing, which is just to read my email. But I kind of like round cube because it's uh, the way it looks and the way it works. If you don't want it to ask you every time, then you can turn on enable auto load and it'll just automatically go to round cube. But I won't activate that just yet because maybe you do want to test drive it. Go check all three of them out and then decide which one you like. But I'm going to select, just click on the, the logo, round cube. And then so I get this. Uh, yeah. The one that you created in cPanel. Remember how it asked you to create an email and put a password that was 80%? So that's the one. So there's my round cube. I'm gonna create I'm gonna create an email and just uh, I'm just gonna send an email. in email setup wizard? Exactly. Alright, so I sent an email and I just got an email. Contact at Victor's info. So that's set up. So I sent an email to myself, I replied to it, and there it is. It came into my inbox. I had a reply from myself. It even printed the emoji. I'll help you in a moment. This is your login screen. This is your login for the email you just created. But I'll help you in a moment. So this email here, uh, this works. And if you also want to check uh, your login here on my other web browser, I can also practice that. I can, remember, I can go back to the address, the name of my site slash wp-admin, and I can practice logging into my new site. What did I recommend? Class. Thank you. So I'm just going to practice here on another web browser. Uh, I I'm going to my address, the name of my site slash wp-admin. So give that a try. Open a new tab or open a new window. Go to the address of your site slash wp-admin to get the practice about logging into your your WordPress site.
So the address is wp-admin, and then I'll, I'll log in with that um, WordPress login information that it asked me when I was setting up WordPress with Installatron. So um, you log in, and there it is. I'm logged into my WordPress site again. So the point of this was to practice to log into my email address and to log into my WordPress. I'm going to wrap up the main lecture in just a moment, and then we'll have some lab time. But what we accomplished today was we, um, you know, we we created a GoDaddy account, we claimed a domain name, we bought some hosting, then we set up the hosting where we installed WordPress, then we created an email address, and after all of that, then we just practice logging into each of them, the email address and the hosting and we'll actually do stuff with it. But now this is why we wanted to do all of this, because now this is more legitimate. I've got my website, victorsart.info, instead of victorsart.wordpress.com. And I've got my own address, email address. I've got contact at victorsart.info instead of contact victorsart.gmail.com. Right? So now we're much more legitimate. There's still, of course, plenty more to learn, but at this point we've got our site set up, and what you could do here, um, I'll mention it again in more detail next time, what you could do is uh, if you log back into your WordPress.com address, so imagine this is my WordPress.com, not the one on GoDaddy, and I've got here tools export. From WordPress.com I can select to export my site. It'll give me a file. Then I log into my GoDaddy WordPress, and what do I think? What do you think you do here? Import exactly. So you're going to be exporting what you've got at WordPress.com, and you're going to be importing it into your GoDaddy WordPress. You can try it on your own if you'd like, but we'll do it together next time. Or you can just start over. We we don't have so much on our on our existing yeah. site that maybe start over to get the practice of doing it again. But I'll talk about this next time and um, then we'll continue and we'll have another homework and so forth. There's no homework just yet, but you do want, if you, have, if you weren't able to do it today, you do want to buy your GoDaddy, you want to set up WordPress, you want to set up an email. If you're not going to do with GoDaddy, fine, do Bluehost or, uh, or HostMonster or wherever. Uh, just do it, set it up, and then eventually we'll have homework uh, as we get further along in our site. Any general questions? All right, so I'm going to wrap this up here. We'll do some lab time until about 7.30 if you need any help, and then when we come back next time, we'll learn some more stuff. Remember, you've got the homework from last week due tonight. Hi.